And if you always try to create something with an audience in mind, I don't know if that works out well all the time because then you'll present it to them and then if they don't like it, then that's the end of the world for you. Right. Should just create for the sake of creation is like probably the best way to go. Social media can be a mixed bag. But for me, one of the absolute best things about it is that it introduces me to artists that I wouldn't otherwise know about because my friends post about them. And that is the case for the subject of our very first artist spotlight. My name is Ziggy. I'm a visual artist in Carrollton, Texas, and um, I'm from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, but have been raised in Texas ever since I was like eight years old. All right, so tell me about your comedian series. Obviously, you have a lot of pieces about, of different comedians, so um, how'd that get started? What is that? My uncle, when I was growing up, like, showed me, like, uh, George Carlin, like, HBO special, and man, from there, it was just like, I don't know, they're like my, uh, my uh, Plato and, like, Aristotle, you know? They're like my philosophers, so, when my my brother-in-law now, who's my he's my brother-in-law, growing up we were friends. When he was in Turkey opening a restaurant for Wolfgang Puck, uh, stuff was like going really bad over there. It was during a time period where there was like an attempted coup, like military coup, and he was like freaking out. And uh, I was like, well, when you get back, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do this thing that we always talked about doing, which was painting our favorite comedians. So it was kind of this thing to keep them kind of distracted. And it's like one of my favorite things that I think I've made because people see it and they just like, they'll start walking from like 10 yards away and they'll just start saying crazy shit like at your painting. Cause they'll just take the bits, right? right. And they'll just start like, you see the way my bank account is set up. And it's like, they're laughing and they're approaching my work in a way where it's like, where it's like they connect with it and, um, and um, that's, that's like what it's all about for me. Some of the stylistic things that you do, um, I noticed that on some of these pieces, there's a difference. The actual like subject of the piece in the background, there's a different feel, different vibe. There's like a matte finish on some of it within a, it looks like it's I don't know, shining basically the oh, background. Oh yeah, so when I was like a total noob at painting, I started painting um, honestly not that long ago. I've been drawing forever. And I was always the, the draw the buildings guy when me and my friends would make comic books and they would do the characters and I would draw the buildings. So when I had time to practice on my own, I practiced drawing people. And um, I got so into that, that I kind of like, backgrounds kind of like became like not my thing. And when I was reading about doing portraiture, they're saying that you should have a matte finish for a portrait so that it doesn't produce glare when you're looking at it. You can get more depth of color out of it. And then when I was studying abstract painting, they're saying, well, you should gloss an abstract painting because it's more interesting to look at. Right. It'll catch your eye, catch your eye more. And so the backgrounds, we ended up glossing and then the portrait, we ended up matting so that it really gives a really kind of floating kind of appearance to it. You did a couple pieces for Ben, you did a couple pieces for Skin, correct? Yeah. I did some, I did some digital work for Ben for his studio, um, and Skin I did some uh, large size, uh, poster size stuff for him. He had seen my stuff on Instagram and uh, I did a Hunter S. Thompson and he asked if that was a commission or if I had it for sale. And I was like, well, I'll paint you whatever you want, <laughs> like, anything you want. He's like, what if I got really weird with it and did a Hunter S. Thompson, but as Bill Murray from where the Buffalo roam with my favorite Hunter S. Thompson quote. It's like, you do anything you want, as weird as you want, I'll do it. And so that's how that started. Do you 
have any specific artistic influences? Growing up, I was, I was really lucky. Like, really, really lucky. Um, in this neighborhood, uh, the guy used to live over here, his name was Jeff Amano. He did the covers for um, Beckett for a long time, and he did his own comic books. And through that family, they just took me in under their wing and sort of introduced me to all aspects of like comics, comic book art. I saw Frank Miller stuff. Uh, the first time I read Sin City was at his house. I got to meet um, David Mack. He does the comic book called Kabuki and his water, he watercolor paints a comic. And it's really, really super unique. But like, I like worship this guy's artwork and then it's like I'm watching him just kind of sketch and it's like Christmas break and it's like I got to actually meet these people. I got to hear their stories firsthand. I got to hear Jim Mahfood talk about like how he got rejected so many times and like almost quit. Almost quit trying to be a comic book artist because he got rejected so many times. And then he ends up doing the Clerks comic because the, of his unique style. They were like, that's the guy to do this new comic. And so, you know, I got to meet those people. Is there a favorite piece for you that you've created? That I've created? Oh, everything I've created is garbage. You can throw it all away. <laughs> it's all awful. Uh, no, um, gosh, you know, I don't know. Honestly, honestly, I do have something that I've done favorably. Like, so I do these things, they're called timed practices. Um, I did like a masterful, like perfectly proportionate Chris Farley in like 12 minutes. And it's like the favorite thing that I've ever made because it's like, I actually, wow, it came out right. It didn't, I didn't have to throw it away. It looks so good. All right, well, is there anything else specifically that you want to make sure people know about you? Hmm. If you're really good at Apex, can you add me on PlayStation? I'm at HappyChop909 on PSN. One last quick note about Ziggy's art is that it's accessible. He has commission work starting at around $100. That's a pretty fantastic price for a great piece of art and to support a local artist.